Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to discuss this meta ethical theory called emotivism in contrast to religious and theistic people that I've spoken throughout my life. And if there's one thing, if you are anybody that, let's say, can be classified as a skeptic, an atheist, an agnostic, you know, somebody that doubts religion, somebody that doubts spirituality, the supernatural in general, at some point you can't have this conversation long enough before you arrive to a conversation about moral philosophy and how we ground, you know, objective morality, essentially. Or at least if you talk to somebody who is theistic and oftentimes oftentimes believes in uh, Abrahamic religion, they're going to ask you, oh, so how can you prove that your morals are true, quote unquote? And it's pretty interesting because in contrast to this, this is why in particular I wanted to talk about emotivism. I'm here right now to say that no one can actually prove their ethics. I'm trying to distinguish this from the video that I already made on moral nihilism, but I acknowledge that this is another video talking about moral anti-realism. So my apologies if a bunch of things like, you know, cross into that topic, quote unquote, that's not what I'm trying to do because it's, a uh, yeah, it's its own separate meta ethical theory. Whereas moral nihilism will talk about how morality just doesn't exist at all. Emotivism is exactly how it sounds. Emoti emotional there, I'll just say that. It talks about how, you know, morality and ethics are just emotional expressions and they don't actually have any truth value in them whatsoever. So what does that mean? It means that if you say murder is wrong, that is not a true or false statement. One cannot factually determine whether murder is wrong is actually a logically true or incorrect statement. So how are you going to be able to explain this? Well, quite simply, another way of referring to emotivism is essentially the boo hurrah, you know, notion of it. And what do I mean when I say that? So essentially, if you say murder is wrong, all you're saying is, oh, boo, murder. If you say that donating to charity is good, you're just saying, hurrah, charity. But these things, when you actually look at it, are not structured arguments. Therefore, they cannot be determined for any logical, you know, sort of accuracy. So essentially, I would argue in support of emotivism that these are basically just phenomenal experiences and they cannot actually be proven right or wrong. So you might ask, how exactly can you believe something without it, you know, being true or false? And in actuality, we do this all the time. We do this with opinions. We do this with preferences. If I say that my favorite color is blue, that isn't a factually right or wrong statement. It's just an expression about me and, you know, me saying hurrah to the color blue, essentially. So if you cross this with morality, there is no difference. There is no difference, essentially. Therefore, all moral statements cannot be proven true or false because essentially, essentially, they would be nothing other than descriptive claims. If you accept or condone anything, it is just a phenomenal experience within your emotions that cannot actually be logically determined for anything. So for example, if you have a preference for chocolate over vanilla, where does that come from? You're not going to be able to logically tell me why chocolate is better than vanilla. You can express, you can give a descriptive term and explain that chocolate is better than vanilla through that alone. But the closest you'll get to any like logical coherence or any like factual coherence is just, you know, the, the wirings in your brain that approve of chocolate over vanilla. So if you cross this towards morality, what is the difference? Because when you witness certain acts and you condone of them, like let's say you say that murder is wrong, 
that is just a phenomenal experience in your head that translates no differently to when, let's say you eat chocolate and you know you prefer it over vanilla. So it is just a recognition of a descriptive term that you place upon the world through your phenomenal experience. But that's not how logic and argumentation work, though. If you prove something as right or wrong, you have to structure that argument. You know, obviously, you have to go point by point or whatever. You cannot do that with moral statements. And even if you want to, you know, appeal to the law, it's obviously flawed because it takes a utilitarian approach. Whereas, okay, just because everybody is expected to follow these rules, why is it that these rules are actually, you know, quote unquote, objective? So all of morality, I would argue, is essentially just manipulative language. And it's funny how when a lot of people who do believe in God talk about like the objectivity of like morals, why are they asking these questions as if they're trying to provoke something? Like if a religious person asks, oh, so it's just an opinion to stomp on puppies being wrong, or it's just an opinion. I'm just like, well, yeah, to be honest, it is because not everybody's going to react, you know, in the same way. And I'll simply just bring up, oh, the Euthyphro dilemma again, whereas if morality had inherent properties to be right or wrong, why do we need a God to decipher that it's right or wrong? It should already have it on its own. If morality is dictated simply because God says something is right or wrong, then it will always be within God's subjective purview. Even if you want to argue that oh, God will never change his stance on morality for what he has decided, you know, is right or wrong. That doesn't eliminate the potentiality. And if you're being consistent with your logic, if God were to hypothetically ever change his mind about something, you would have to adhere to it simply just because God is, quote unquote, your standard for morality. And I just want to point out that it's hilarious that so many people believe in God. There's so many denominations of Christianity, and they might have like a slight difference on something. But I guess the overall basis would be God dictates morality, right? He is the author of morality, quote unquote. But yet it just so happens to align with the values that you already adhere to. It's funny how everybody's God already believes in the things that you personally want to believe in. If hypothetically you do believe in a God and you do associate your morality with this God. So I just have something that I want a lot of you to think about. What if God were to hypothetically come down and he were to say, oh, guys, the Catholic interpretation is the right one. The Mormon interpretation is the right one. The Jehovah interpretation is the right one. Would you adhere to it like, you know, in a snap? I don't think a lot of you would. A lot of you would probably lose your fucking minds, honestly. I know that a lot of you would have your entire world shattered if God were to simply actually come like, you know, assuming that like, okay, I'm going to entertain that he's real or like whatever and say that a particular religion, you know, got it right. I can only imagine the faces that a lot of you would have. So this is what I mean that essentially all of morality is just an expression of your own, you know, personal emotions and they have no grounding in anything because you can't ground them on anything you can just believe in a God and that God is supposedly going to be, you know, the one that like upholds your values. And yet you believe in the God personally that already does uphold your values. So it's like, it's nothing other than cognitive dissonance. It only comes from yourself and you have nothing to back it up whatsoever. So if you create this, you know, delusion of a higher being that supposedly backs up everything that like, you know, you you think to yourself that you don't have the burden of having to actually justify yourself anymore, but you are just through this like fictional notion of a God. It has always, you know, come from you. And I don't think you're going to let go of those values that you supposedly hold like so dear, even if it were to hypothetically be proven to you that God is, you know, actually not real. Entertain that idea, because if I can entertain the idea that God is real right now, then you should be able to entertain the notion that, okay, let's say God is not real. Are you just going to drop those values? I don't think you would, because people are so swayed by their emotions all the time. So here's the thing. 
I believe when it comes to like morality, nobody actually cares if they can prove it right or wrong or not. If you can make it come off as logical, that's obviously always to, you know, your advantage. And as much as possible, people are going to try to do that with their morality. But then ultimately, whatever you determine as like right or wrong is just basically a random trigger in your head that says, oh, I like this or I don't like this. And I'm going to do everything I can to like, you know, you know, put that afloat. But nobody can actually justify it. And that's why humans will keep fighting for generations and generations because, well, if you ask me, everyone's just, you know, fucking selfish. So there you go.